Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to part two with the incredible Harry Dunn. Let's, Let's go. do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have kind of your four guys, your go-to guys for promo voice for the CW, but you guys are open to new voices and bringing on you know, whether it's for a, a one-off. Um, can you talk about what kinds of voice types are competitive for the All right, well, let me just go back to the four guys. Mm -hmm. uh, for years, it was Reno Romano, Scott Rummel, mm -hmm. Mike McCall, and Zach Fine. And Zach Fine is just a, just, he, you know, if you want to know how to be a great voiceover, listen to Zach Fine, because he is the model of consistency. He's yeah. done my America's Next Top Model. Mm -hmm. I've done probably eight cycles of that show. And he has been the voice in all of them, and he is he's just a one-take yeah. guy. He's great. He's very consistent. Yeah. But they just got used to voices. So I have been pushing new voices. And our senior vice president is this woman named Jen, and she's a lovely woman. She's a smart, Emory-educated woman, and she has been very open to my suggestions. So... Uh, when Heart of Dixie came up, let's go back. So in one of Mary Lynn's classes was this young guy named Max Middleman, mm -hmm. okay? I, I, he cannot be more than 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Max, I'm kidding. You're, no. you're, 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 and he's you're, watching you're, you're right 19. now. He you're 19. He yeah. just had his 18th Yeah, birthday. he just finished school. <laughs> yeah, he gets carded wherever he goes. Yeah. But he was in a workshop of mine, and then we had this, this god-awful reality show come up called Famous in 12, and it just needed a young voice. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I said, you know what, Jen, let me, what do you think of this guy? And she says, wow, okay. So we brought him in and he, and he did the audition. So, you know, so she says, audition him. So I will, since I know Max, I got through, hold of Max through Mary Lynn, mm -hmm. through, because of the voices, voice casting workshop. And he did, you know, an MP3 for me. It's not, I'm never going to go to final with an MP3. Right. By the way, if you have a chance between an MP3 and an AIF for your audition, send the AIF. It's just a better resolution. It sounds less muddy than an MP3. You mean for you? For me, yeah, okay. Mr. Promo Guy, yeah, because uh, agents I know ref yeah, prefer the MP3s. Yeah, they, the they files have are really the, big. agents have a lot of uh, they eat up a lot of email space, yeah. but 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 if it's coming directly to you, yeah, it's in the air. Yeah. Anyways, and he was great, and so we brought him in, and he came in, and we read him, and he was the voice of the campaign. So all of a sudden, there's a new guy that's in the staple, and then. Last week, we had a, I did a uh, spot for the CW Seed, which is our uh, internet television network, mm -hmm. long story short. And Max was the perfect voice for that because it was a young, hip, and he, he delivered. Yeah. He delivered really well. Mm -hmm. So Max got that gig. And then I uh, went to Jen on Heart at Dixie because, and Mike McCall was doing two of our other shows. He was doing Rain and another show at the time. And I, that's, I go, that's three shows. Are we sure about this? I got this guy named Dustin Layton. Dustin James, but I call him Dustin Layton, and she goes, let's read him. And uh, so he auditioned for me, mm -hmm. same way, except me an MP3. She liked the voice, she wasn't sure about the reading. She goes, well, just bring him in, let's just bring him in and read him to picture. So Dustin came in, we read him to picture, and she loved him. She thought he was great, mm -hmm. and, from, and then he got the Heart of Dixie campaign. And that Beautiful. was, you know, 13 weeks, plus reruns, four uh, you know, what do you call them, uh, tags, you know, that's, you know, yeah. you know so yeah. he made good yeah. bank off of yeah. that, and he delivered, you know, and uh, it's about a guy who came to me, wanted to get better, I figured out his voice, I describe him as country comfort, that's what he delivers. Mm -hmm. I love that, country comfort. He's country comfort, Heart of Dixie's a show that takes place in Alabama. He's the Cracker Barrel of promo. He's the cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Her words, not mine. Her words, not mine. He comes mine. with a biscuit. Um, okay, so now I, you know, I, I do promos, and I'm thinking of my female viewers out there who do as well. Uh, do the gals get a shot on the CW? Well, there, I gotta Mr. tell Don? you something. I did push a woman uh, to do uh, Don't something. Don't push for the women. C it's so tacky. Harry. Well, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather is fighting this week, but <laughs> we won't talk about okay. that. I tried to further the cause yes. of the female gender. And how'd that go? Well, we brought in s uh, some auditioners for a spot I had done for a. Uh, CW Seed show called Husbands, mm -hmm. and uh, there's this one girl I love named Becky Boxer. She did a terrific read, but they went with an actress named Ariel Kebble because she was on one of our shows. And they, but long story short, a woman did get the voiceover okay. gig for that. Cool. So uh, I have broken the glass ceiling as a man. Yeah. So you get down. So, Thank you, Harry. I think CW Seed is the opportunity for women in our network. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Very good.
Okay, I, good. I love that. Thank you, Harry. I, 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 I hear promos all the time, and I'm always like, why, why aren't they using a woman on that, you know? Um, it's because I'm sitting I, next I, to I you. I love it when, when women do promos. I think that right. they bring something so, Well, sometimes so it works, different. sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. There's no question. Um, uh, so let me ask you something. Uh, here you are. You're directing promos. You're writing them. You are doing a great service by teaching actors how to be great at promos, um, which I love, that you're not like the jack of all trade instructor. You're like, listen, I know how to do that and I can teach you how to be great at that. I love that, I respect that. What, how do you stay on top of the game? On what's current, on what's happening, what the new thing, the flavor coming in, does that come from higher up within CW or is that something that you bring to the table or you hear something, what happens? I don't know, it's just organic. There's really not an answer to that question. It really depends on what the promo is. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, if I'm doing America's Next Top Model, I'm not going to fix what ain't broke. Zach comes right. in, Zach's going to nail the read, everything's good. But then again, I got this, you know, the Heart of Dixie thing. I wrote it a little differently than the previous year, yeah. where I, I wrote it more of a country comfort feel, so it worked out well for Dustin. Yeah. It's just about, you know, there's no right or wrong answer to that question. It's just a how the spot evolves. Well, well, hold on. And so is that more of a com? Cause you, we talked that we said, oh, we're going to talk about that. The conversational read oh, versus the, the you know read. the big the big read. So what, what what's the deal there? Well, I'll tell you, that's a better. I can answer the question better when I'm talking about the demos that I've done. Okay. Because the conversational read is, and I do, and, and I tell you when the best time to use a conversational read is in a quote spot, mm. because. The quotes are usually so effusive. You can, don't wait, can, you, can you back up and just for people that don't know what a quote spot is? Yeah, what is quote a quote spot? Quote spots are cr uh, critics are giving it up for Jane the Virgin. Miraculous. There's nothing plain about CW's Jane. Gina Rodriguez is flat out amazing and the breakout star of the fall season. Mm -hmm. That was one of my spots, all right? So, bravo, bravo. Well done, well done. So, Encore. So, when you have effusive quotes like that, yeah. mm -hmm. and you read it bombastically, it's overkill. So I, I say this, here's a conversation. You're sitting at the table, and I'm this far away from you at the table, and I've watched Jane the Virgin. And I'm gonna say, you know what, Chuck, I gotta tell you something, critics are giving it up for Jane the Virgin. It's miraculous. There's nothing plain about CW's Jane. I'm not gonna talk to you like this and say, critics right. are giving it up, because you'd be like, dude. Um, yeah. um, Harry, why are you Dial screaming it back. at me? Right. Yeah. So conversational, just imagine, in fact, in fact, with Heart of Dixie, the one note I gave Dustin right from the start was, I want you to visualize that you're on a porch, you're in the south, it's a wraparound porch, mm -hmm. the cicadas are chirping, the crickets, you've got a Sweet beer in tea. one hand, you got a dog mm -hmm. at your feet, and you're sitting back and you're reading the spot, and that's conversational, because you're not gonna be in that beautiful, serene, bucolic yeah. environment, and start talking like this! Right. You know, right. you're gonna talk right. like this. So, so to be conversational, just get yourself into the mind frame of a conversation. I tell you who does conversation the best. And if you watch Sunday Night Football, it's Chris Collinsworth. He is the color mm, commentator yeah, of Sunday Night Football. And the reason he's great is because he used to play in the NFL. So when he talks about what it's like to be a receiver, he's not sitting there and acting it out because yeah. he knows it so well. So yeah. he's just yeah. reflecting. And he's just talking mm -hmm. like this. And yeah. he's talking to you on the TV. It's like, well, I know this. I'm just talking to you about it. And that's what conversation is. Just find sort of a zen place yeah. and just say the words in a way that's not bombastic. Mm -hmm. Okay? Cool. Now, you know, it's like, so when I did this demo for Dan Friedman and I had him do Orange is the New Black, actually, when I did the Chris Turberville one and I had him do Togetherness, I just had him read like, from the Duplass brothers, and I had him read like, Togetherness, tonight on HBO. I didn't have him go any more energy yeah, than just that. just real, real Fully conversational HBO read like that. HBO is very... You know, and when I had a... Uh, and when I had Dan do Justified, I had him go, Raylan Givens is moving back to a place where his roots run deep. You know, it was a low gravelly voice, because yeah. that's what he does really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just, dude, just take it down, gravelly voice, conversational. And you know what? It's a great demo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On my website, donepromo.com. <laughs> <laughs> he so. said bombastically. Right. Yeah. Um, so Harry, just give people an idea. Like, What is a, no day is typical, but what is sort of a day like for you and some of the challenges and the highs and the lows that you deal with on any given well, day? Well, let's just talk through an episodic. That's the best way to okay. go. So what I am is I'm a senior producer, but specifically I'm what's known as a predator. Not in the sense of Chris Hansen coming here to arrest me, but P R E D I T O R, producer editor. It's a hybrid word and a very unfortunate hybrid word, but nevertheless a hybrid word. So I do the writing, I do the editing, 
and I build the whole spot from soup to nuts. Wow. So an episode comes in, we'll take we'll say Heart of Dixie. An episode comes, I'll watch the episode. I will uh, make what I call selects, which is I'll find the cute lines of dialogue, the cute Rachel Bilson head turns, the cute things like that. And I will compile a list of what's called subclips so I have them. I will usually at that point go to my senior vice president, Jen, and say, this is what I want to do with the spot. And she'll go, great, go for it. And then I will then cut it together. I will find a music cue from a library because we can't, you know, no network can afford license cues or right. hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. And uh, then I will, I will do my own scratch VO. And I, I, I just have to say from the bottom of my heart, I am an absolutely putrid <laughs> voiceover, okay? You know, those who can't do teach, that is exactly why I'm teaching, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is, but Good, there's you know, no competition with your clients. <sighs> yeah. You should hear my voice. Tonight on Heart of Dixie. Gah! Yeah. So, but nevertheless, it's just they know that Dustin's going to come and save the day. So yeah, it's yeah. all good. Right. So, anyways, so I do my own temp VO, okay? And then it'll go up a chain and it gets bought. And then I'll do, uh, it's a 20 second spot. Then I'll do a cut down of a 10. And then uh, I will send audio the mix and I'll send the finishers and video the video. And we'll bring our voiceover in and I'll direct them. And then the whole thing gets put together, and then it's off my hands, and then on to the next episode. And what is that time frame from the start, from the soup to the nuts? How much for each episode? How much time is you that? You have a week. I can usually get it done in three days, so I get ahead, mm -hmm. and then I end up doing other things. Okay. Um, this is the busiest time of year, the upfront time of year, because yeah. not only are you doing your episodics, you're also doing these presentation pieces for the May upfronts. And for those who don't know what an upfront is, it is, uh, it is an event that takes place in New York in the second week of May, and it is for the media buyers and the advertisers. And what the point of it is, is the president of the network will announce the fall schedule and he will uh, sh talk about what the new shows are on the fall schedule and they'll show like a four minute presentation piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what they want to do is they want to pre-sell the advertising from these media buyers. They want the money up front for the fall season. So right. that's what's about. So it's huge, a lot of pressure, a lot of, a lot of cooks, and you know, mm -hmm. stirring that broth. Yeah. There's a lot of opinions on what it should be, and it takes a while. But this is, you know, how we build our network. Upfronts yeah. are yeah. probably the right. most yeah. important time of the year. And yeah. being able to do an upfront is the hardest job and the most important job mm -hmm. at a network. You have to be able to, you have to be able to tell a story, and you know, and and you have to really be a critical thinker to do an upfront, mm -hmm. because you got to figure out what you to use, what not to use. You know, what's the connective tissue? What's the right music? Go through yeah. a lot of music cues. What's the copy that's going to bridge this group, this, this uh, pot of dialogue to this pot of dialogue? Yeah. It's, it is quite a bit of work. But there's yeah. a lot of people that help and Yeah, and you plus know, you, give you, notes. you've been doing it for so long now. It's probably like you it. just know it. You have it, a you know? crystal ball. I have done it Exactly. For, uh, it's almost yeah. like, you know, sugar in a cup of coffee, right? You just know how to get it right. Um, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I don't drink I am coffee. sure there are people uh, in upper management that would disagree, but yeah. But well, we they're don't. not in our guest chair, so But wah, I wanted wah. to ask it because you said we bring. So I bring the talent in. So do you want the talent to come in and read, or do you ISDN them in? I or? only bring in uh, Max, okay, because he likes to come in, and Dustin because he lives five blocks away. Okay, he, he likes to come in. But everybody else, McCall, Rum, all those guys are on ISDN. Okay. Zach Fine, I think, lives in New York. I think I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. He lives out of state. He comes on ISDM. Okay. And it's uh cool, man. It's great. What so. are some of the challenges for you on any given day, you know, with with you you wear so many different hats and you're trying to do so many different tasks and please different people. So what what Just kind be of be fresh, be original. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's weird, you know, the one thing that's works that's trending away f from voiceover is the advent of the graphic card. Mm -hmm. Where is a lot of promos. In fact, Sometimes I'll get ready for a Mary Lynn thing, and I will like oh, I'm gonna look at some uh, arrow spots, and it's like all cards. And I'll look at yeah. all right, no, I'll just go to Vampire Diaries. There'll be some copy there. No, that's all cards. And I go, oh no, let's look at the Flash. There's gonna be no, that's all cards too. So a lot of it, and then all of a sudden I'm guilty of it now because now I work on a show called Rain, which is our Mary Queen of Scots show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but I'm it's all retail. Cards. But it's I'm all, all cards. retail. And all I do yeah. is just all I hear is Rain. <laughs> this Thursday, it's, you know, it's yeah. all the VO there yeah. is at the end, you know. Yeah. So it's great for Mike McCall because he gets paid every week, and he, we yeah. never have to bring him in. Whether right. he does because, one yeah. word or, right. fi or fifty, um, that's cool, man. So for all the people that might be out there, maybe they have an agent, maybe they don't. Right. Um, maybe they're really great at what they do, maybe they're not yet. Right. But in their minds, they're thinking of someday or even now, I would really love to do promos. Right. In your professional opinion, 
What can somebody do to prepare themselves to be good at doing promos so that they'll have a chance to be successful? You know, whether it's me or whether it's somebody else, you just need a coach. Let's put it this way. Tiger Woods has a swing coach. Yeah. He's won 14 majors, yet he has a swing coach. Yeah. You know? Roger Federer has a coach. Roger Federer's coach is saying, how many Wimbledons has he won? Yeah. You know, the greats and everything always have a coach. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Ongoing, so, not just a one-time here and there. Right. So yeah. if you want to just get coached, if you know, spend the money. Can it's you worth learn it. it? Can you learn from a book? You know what? Go take an act. Go take an improv class, an acting class. Just learn how to act, <laughs> and then it comes and it goes yeah. from there. Right? And, and the reason why I asked you that question is I was just talking to some guy recently who said I've read every book. Mm. I said, "Are you ready for a demo?" He goes, "I've read every book." Well, what about a golfer who's read every book? Yeah, <laughs> you, you gotta, gotta go get up on your feet. Yeah, Have you, you played the, the game? Yeah. Have you swung? Yeah. So, 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 uh, yeah. Okay. Anything else? I mean, I, honestly, I, I, I sit there and watch these. I've watched these golf videos and I've read this <laughs> stuff, and then I go to the driving range and oh, good, there's my banana slice. Fantastic. Mm. You know, but but it <laughs> yeah. just but this you just gotta practice and practice and practice. So instruction is is the is the key. Cool, man. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So Harry, I have to I have to circle back and talk about this real quick about the uh, about the lessons and and, and your one on one stuff because this is really really cool. So what you're saying is that no matter where anybody lives, who their agent is, right. or what network they may have a promo, an audition for, right. that if they contact you, that you will direct them and help them on that audition. Certainly. I do that a fair amount. I mean, my one hour lessons, I will provide the scripts normally, okay? Yeah. And that's, it's not just CW stuff. I have scripts from Spike, I have scripts from you know, TNT, from Fox, I got, a, I got scripts. Yeah, yeah. And I, but they'll have there'll be like a comedy lesson and there'll be like a drama lesson and you know, it's not and sometimes I'll just mix it up. There's a lot of variety of what I want to do. You know, yeah. I just want to just really teach people how to interpret the page because that's where people go wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm really specific about that. But on a number of occasions I've had a client call me and say, I have an audition. Can you help me? And I'll say, you know what? I love doing that. I will prorate my rate. I, chance that it's not going to take an hour. Just, right. You know, I don't want you to feel like you have to pay me a full hour if we only do a 20-minute thing because that's what I love. Yeah. So they send me the script, and uh, and then we go over it. And, you know, sometimes there's the question of the A-B, which means do you do one read and then do a second read? And I, say, well, I was going to ask you about that, yeah. Yeah, so, but today, Dave Cravassier got an audition uh, uh, Agent at Abrams called him, and because she liked his demo reel so much, <laughs> see how good I am. <laughs> that uh, that uh, she wanted him to do an audition, and I, and I looked at, it, I said, okay, I want you to do it in a low gravelly voice, but let's give her a B and do it in your newscaster voice. And so he did an A and a B, and I said, just slate. I go, Dave Cravassier, take one, and then. Right away at the end of the of that take, I said, take, take two. Don't let there be three seconds of space. Or then right. I'm not going to think there's a second take. Just boom, right away. Yeah. So um, so when you do auditions and you have your home studio, cut out your breaths. Tighten everything up. Just be a professional, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't sit there. And, I don't want to hear, like, t tonight on VO Buzz Weekly, Chuck and Stacy talk to Harry Dunn. And what they say will amaze you. It's like nobody wants to yeah. hear the breaths. Just yeah. it should be tonight on VO Buzz Weekly. Chuck and Stacy talk to Harry Dunn, and the answers will amaze you. It should be at that pace. Okay, so mm -hmm. just use your editorial skills. It's not that complicated. Very good. So I, I like love that. it. I yeah. love that you edited your own breath. <laughs> A lot. He is a jack of all You don't even have to know how to edit. You can he just do just, it live. Right. He does so. it all. He just chooses not to do the actual. That's fantastic. So, so let me ask you this, man. Oh, wait, can I just finish some one? Yeah, that? Sorry. of course. Is that when you are doing a long audition, you know, where it's like page for page, don't mm -hmm. feel like you have to do it all in one breath. Just do a line, and you got your little Pro Tools set up or, or, right. or Pro Tools. Did. Do the line. Get it right. All right? There's usually multiple lines of audio, right, guys? So do the line. You like the line, drop it down to this layer, okay? And you're still up here with your, on your record mode. Do the next line. When you like that line, drop that down a layer. So you don't have to go hunting, hunting and fishing for, for your uh, for the text. So all of a sudden, you've done, let's say there's eight lines, and you found your best eight, but now they're all on the second uh, audio uh, channel. Now you can put it together. Cut out the breaths, send it to your agent, all yeah. right? Okay. Wow. I love that. That's right. what we love do in it. music, by the way. Yeah. Right. We do three tracks of vocals, 
and then we listen to each track and we take all the good takes that we want and we Drop put them, them on down. a comp track, which is a composition track of the good stuff. Yeah, you just don't want to have to sit there and play the one time. I think it was here. Yeah, I think it was here. Did I hit a locator button? Uh, maybe I didn't. It's, no, just drop it down. Beautiful. Well, so, let me ask you this, man, because hearing you talk, and you know, when we when we met you at that party that we met you at, I got invited for what was what party? Well, was I that? met Harry first at his workshop with Mary Lynn. That's yeah. right, you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you like him then? Loved it. Okay, good. Because when we met you at the party, that's why I talked to you. And I forget what party. that party was, <laughs> but. We, you were really cool, man. I remember talking yeah. to you, and I remember thinking, man, this guy is really cool. But the one thing that I remember, and you're displaying it now, you are, you're cool. I don't care what you think, but you are. <laughs> um, one thing that I remembered then, and that I'm you know, remembering again now, or being aware of now again, is that you were very passionate about, A, what you do, mm -hmm. and being great at it, and also of, of, of teaching others how to, how to do it great. So I, I, what makes you want to teach people how to do that, how to be great, what, what, why? I don't, I don't know, I just, I just came up with a curriculum in my head one day after this lunch with Heather and I just think it helps. It's, I don't know, it's fun. It's fun, especially when people get agents, when they get jobs, yeah. you know, and I get emails saying thank you so much, you know, I, you really helped. You know, obviously I've had some clients that have done one or two lessons with me and never hear from them again. Okay, that's sure. just part for the course. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I would say I have a good 10 to 12 that are regulars that, you know, at least once a month, if not twice a month. And, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're helping them, so. Yeah. That's fantastic. What do you still want to accomplish in your career? Like, oh, where's Harry uh, in 10 years? I would like to get back into TV writing, film writing again. But, you know, and I'm working on stuff with, you know, I have a writing partner, my best friend since kindergarten, who is a... Kindergarten. Yeah, That's I know. So very successful cool. writer in town. Know. Very successful writer in town. He and I are working on various things, but we'll keep that cryptic. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, cryptic. we'll uh, something will break it at that point. But Beautiful. in the meantime, I'm enjoying what I'm doing at the CW. It's a great place. You know what the ultimate compliment to the CW is? Is People who come in as freelancers ask, "How can I get on staff?" This place yeah, is amazing. That's huge. Nobody yells, nobody freaks out. You know, it's just, it's everybody is just, it's so nice. Everybody's treated equally and fairly and, and lovely. There is no bias of any kind. It is it is it is it is like a utopia over there in the mm -hmm. way people treat That's each fantastic. other. That's fantastic. That's beautiful. So, and it makes it. You know, I've been there a long time, and I usually don't stay places a long time. But I would, I can't think of a scenario other than winning the lottery or selling a script where I would leave that place. It's yeah. that yeah. delightful to work there. That's cool. I love it. And I'm sure they say the same thing about you. Heck yeah. CW rocks. Uh, <laughs> hey, let's put uh, Harry okay. in the uh, hot seat and ask him Harry's, an if question. Harry's not going to like. Okay, See, Harry. you haven't watched the whole Veal Buzz Weekly episode <laughs> to the end, have you? Then you'd know what's in store for you, Harry. Gonna, okay, so Harry, <laughs> pick a number between 5 and 129, please, and tell me the number. 23. 23. Um... Okay, this is not going to happen, but... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me while I prep for this question, everybody. You dropped, your, you dropped your shirt. No. If your home were to be totally destroyed by fire, it's not going to happen, and you could only save one thing, what would it be? Obviously, your family's out, your pets are out, but one actual thing. My TV remote. I cannot live without my TV remote. I don't even care if the TV goes on the plane. Give me my remote. Oh my God! So he is a—he's a guy's guy, man. He'll be you gotta the you're, you're, I saw. Then you follow sports. Yeah. I guarantee you, you're always locked into the sports. You were just checking scores a little while ago, mm -hmm. so you are die hard. What's your? Are you all global I, sports guy, or is there a specific? My love for Chuck and Stacy is such that I gave up the Clipper game tonight oh, to be on the show. What? That is you big. DV, you DVR'd it though. Put it there, dude. Thank you so much for coming Thank down you. here. Very sharing pleasure. with Such a us, pleasure. Thank sharing you so with much. them, they now love you. <laughs> Call them up. Let them let them let, let them teach you all the stuff that he's got to give. You're always welcome here. Thank you so much, and get in touch with him. www.dunpromo.com. Dunpromo.com. We will see you guys next week. Hi, this is Harry Dunn, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and let me tell you, they are the apotheosis of VO creativity. Yowza. Well, that concludes our uh, episodes with the awesome Harry Dunn. We're going to be back next week with some new episodes for you. Absolutely. Keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And don't forget to watch us on YouTube, too. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.